Um, hi, uh, my name is Ginny. Uh, I'm an engineering manager at Carousel. And um, I have a condition since I was very young called strabismus, also known as a squint. So what has this got to do with my talk? Now, imagine that for a normal person, your eyes look like this, mine look like this. So my, eye, my right eye turns inwards towards my nose, and as a result of it not being treated when I was young, most of the time, my vision is kind of effectively this. In order to prevent double vision, the brain shuts down the visual input from my misaligned eye, and generally, this can lead to lazy eye and loss of vision. So this means I have no binocular vision. Objects tend to appear in a different spot than where they actually are. And red, green 3D glasses are all just red to me. <laughs> uh, and about a year ago, I somehow managed to scratch my left eye and I ended up with corneal abrasion. So, and it's really extremely painful and it makes your eye sensitive to light as well, so you can't really open it. Um, so this, and since my right eye is also funky, this means that for a whole weekend, my vision was effectively this. And suddenly I was kind of transported into the world of the unsighted. Well, um, thank God for screen readers because you, um, such as VoiceOver on Mac or JAWS on Windows, in my experience I was using VoiceOver on a Mac and the iPhone. Because frankly, if not because of it, I don't know how I would have survived that weekend given that I'm kind of chronically addicted to the internet. Uh, but the experience could have been better, so here are some quick tips on how you can actually adapt your website to play nicer with screen readers and improve the um, experience for the visually impaired. Uh, so first of all, use semantic HTML. For example, if the text is not a header, don't use header text. You can style it some other way using CSS instead. Uh, this is because screen readers actually lets the user skip through header text to quickly skim through an entire page content. So using it for unintended purposes can actually mess the screen reader experience a little bit. And this goes to say, uh, for all other elements as well. Second is consider taking advantage of things like ARIA elements, such as nav and section text, as well as adding role attributes to key content sections, such as uh, navigation, main, or search. Um, this is because modern screen readers already provide for an easy way for users to skip across sections of content using landmarks and page outlines. VoiceOver's web rotor, for example, in conjunction with the trackpad or the touchscreen on the iPhone, actually allows the user to actually skip through content within a page by rotating your fingers on it. So this greatly um, enhances the experience. Third, um, give context. So for example, if you want to um, display an element but that you don't want the element to display text. Visually hide it instead using CSS, but make sure that the text exists in your DOM. Screen readers can't focus on an empty element, so it might be skipping over important element that you want to tell your user. Same goes with um, elements without names or labels. A screen reader would know what an input field is for unless you also give it an associated label. For example, if you have a sign up form, having a label first name for the input field. This will cause the screen reader to properly say first name, edit text. In this example, the screen reader will simply say button, even if visually you can see the word submit. Add the word submit instead so that the screen reader will say submit button. And for this, it will simply say link, click here. Here it will say link, example.com. Much better. And make sure you also put alt descriptions for your image text. And you can omit words like image of or picture of because the screen reader already know and they will tell the user. For example, if you have an alt text that says, get curled up in a ball looking suspicious, the screen reader will say, image, cat curled up in a ball looking suspicious. And if you want to do things like hover menus or you know, anything that requires 
the user to actually visually see something in order to interact with it. Make sure that the underlying HTML elements and structure of that menu is still accessible via the DOM so that the screen reader can actually focus into it. And if you want to implement things like infinite scrolling, consider this scenario. The user wants to scroll to the bottom of the page because they want to see what's down there or maybe you want to click a link on the footer. But the page never ends because it keeps infinitely loading more stuff. So what you can do is to add a load more button or just use standard pagination instead. And a link should be a link, not some random HTML with a click handler. Finally, consider the fonts and colors that you use in your website. Make sure that there is sufficient contrast and that the size is legible enough. And especially for mobile websites, try not to prevent the user from being able to zoom in and out or restrict their um, user's uh, scalable or max scale. And remember that even for the fully sighted people, there are those among us who are actually colorblind. So don't depend solely on color to deliver context. For example, when you're displaying content for stock market, try to add shapes to indicate whether it's going up or down instead of just red or green. So these are just some quick tips for adding better accessibility support from your site. And you know, accessibility isn't just an abstract concept for a small group of people who don't of, we don't often think about. Disability can be temporary or situational as well, just like how I was temporarily blind for a weekend, or maybe when you're just carrying a bag of groceries home. And adding better accessibility support helps everyone, not just the permanently blind, oh sorry, permanently disabled. So Microsoft actually has a very good guide on inclusive design, so you should actually go check it out. I have the link in my resources. And I'd like to end by giving a special shout out to a special person, Mr. Yam tong -woo, um, who nearly 10 years ago introduced me to the world of accessible tech and how to use voiceover, and in doing so, unknowingly helped me to survive that blind weekend. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, just a little bit of a call out over here. Um, so I'll share this link, uh, the slides later, but I'll specifically like to call out the first link, which is the story about how a local company here hired a blind developer. So you should go check it out. Thank you.